Greetings and salutations, friends, and welcome back to some more Gravity Team Tactic. So, let's see... Uh, nothing spotted right off the bat. That might be occupied, that might be empty. I can't see... aha, uh -huh, that's probably occupied. Okay, well, let's... Enemy contact. With what? Oh, really? Th okay, I did not see that coming, I'll admit that much. Well, we'll deploy the tanks to put that under fire. Oh, one of our... How the hell did you deploy all the way over there? One of our guys had deployed a million miles ahead of everybody else for some fascinating reason. Okay. We should be able to move into supporting positions with the tanks and start firing at them. Uh, oddly enough, we're not firing already, which I'm not entirely sure why. I mean, pretty sure you can see the enemy. Can you really not? Commander is killed and the vehicle is abandoned. Okey bloody dokey, what the hell just did that? Okay. Aha, there are anti tank guns up there, of course there are. Try and back up from that, shall we? No, that's the wrong button. That tells them to. Ah. Uh, what was the bloody reverse key again? I can't even remember now. Oh, those aren't even anti-tank guns. They hold down T-34s. Well, that's a problem. That is certainly a bit of a problem. Let's try and get the hell out of the way of that. The airplanes will have a bit of a field day with that, no doubt. We might also... No, we can't, because we can't see the bloody area. Of course we can't. Tanks have decided they no longer want to stay have a hold down. I'm pretty sure the range is too much to effectively assault them to. Okay, so there's nothing over here, essentially, because otherwise then we wouldn't have been able to take that, so... Okay, there's something there, though. That much is obvious. But we can pretty much just give an attack order to the tanks and push on into that area. And we will attack over here as well. The legs have knocked out the vast majority of the infantry in the general area, so that's always handy. For reasons of which I am not entirely sure, the infantry is actually assaulting, but very haphazardly, so let's just give them orders to go in there and help out a bit. So at the very least, they'll be able to do it in a little bit more of an organized fashion. What kind of range is this? 600 meters, that's probably... ...too far to really be effective. Uh, 
I'll have to start moving closer, I'm afraid. That was quite a shot, though, to actually nail my bloody Panzer II from all the way over here. Dang. Some oh, that's been knocked out, so we don't need to priority target that, nor do we need to priority target that. Well, that went reasonably well, actually, surprisingly so. Enemy mortar emplacements are still here being annoying, though. Okay, well, with that dealt with, we can really just send them uh, towards Amber. Sounds like there's anti-air of some sort firing at the aircraft from over here. There definitely is something over there, that's for sure. But uh, we're not sure if yet. What is over there? The AI really does love forests a bit too much, really. I mean, it's a wonderful defensive position, true, but... It also means that the vast majority of the time your units cannot effectively support each other, which is problematic. Junkers have certainly found something to pick on over here. Quite a lot of infantry position. That looks like another hold down tank position. And that's another one, and that's another one, and that's another one. Oh, bloody hell. So they've got a lot of T 3476s in this area. Okay, well, we're not going to attack that yet. We're going to wait for the Panzer IV 75s before we get uh, aggressive in that general direction, then. We can secure this area, certainly. We'll move up or make sure we have Celestine, maybe even Amber. And, of course, we can wipe out the platoon or so of enemy troops that were in this area here without too much of a problem. Cancel their attack, there's no real point in wasting good HE shells on this. The lack of commanders is really screwing me, because the uh, command cost for my units is uh, astro bloody nomical. Okay, well, that's the vast majority of them dealt with, I think. Okay, well, we might as well cancel the links too. Jesus Christ, that's gonna take my entire command bar just to order them to stop firing. Jesus. Well, the loss of that Panzer II leader is uh, annoying, shall we just say. I didn't think that was the leader tank, though, but apparently it was. Odd. Okay, is that it for them? Looks like it might be, actually. Hmm. Well, let's... Uh, 
I don't really like your uh, line formation here, but uh, we've discovered something else, definitely. I'll spread ourselves over that area and uh, cone it for enemies. Ah, more infantry, no doubt. Oh, yeah, that, uh, that Maxim's not gonna work too well, I'm afraid. It's going to have a wee bit of a problem stopping this. Let's not get too close, though. And we'll have the remaining tanks just take up defensive positions over here in case the enemy decides for some. Ooh. Am I? Am I already in range? Jesus Christ, apparently I am. Okay, let's not be in range. Let's see. Well, where the hell was the reverse button again? It's been a while since I've actually played now, so I don't remember where the bloody hell the reverse button is. Yeah, well. Defensive move backwards. Are uh, you getting shot at too? No, I don't think so. Let's not get that close to the trenches, just because God knows if they've got Molotovs. Ah, of course. That's the reverse button, naturally. Well, that's this position pretty much annihilated, really. Okay. Solid. I'll bring up the Panzer Falls next turn, and we'll call in another bombing run. Hopefully it'll do... I, I assume it's the... I don't know what they were trying to knock out here. They were trying to kill this. It looks like they didn't get any direct hits, though. You can uh, give priority orders to the aircrafts, but... Uh, I didn't this time, and there's... It's, Sometimes they're a little bit wonky about actually, you know, carrying out their priority orders, because, of course, the priority order is not, as I have, I believe I've explained anyways, uh, as I said earlier, it's not a, um, it's not a direct order, so to, so, so to say, you know? It's, um... A suggestion. Oh, Jesus Christ, we're still getting shot out. Let's get back there. If the unit decides by itself that it is not capable of, you know, fulfilling the order, like if it doesn't see the target or anything along those lines, it's not going to attack the target, you know? Oh, engine is still running. Odd. But yeah, so if the uh, aircraft pilot decides that he's not in proper range or anything to carry out his orders, he's not. That simple, really. It's just a teensy weensy bit frustrating, it can definitely be, but it is certainly realistic, you can't fault them on that. Let's move up the half-tracks to uh, cover, and uh, then we'll send an infantry squad to see what's left of that place. And we'll use the rest of the infantry to see if there's anything left alive in this area. Am I getting shot at? I think I might be. I'm not sure if whether or not that's... shelling, or... Not sure. Best play it safe and pull back, I suppose.
Well, we lost one tank. We lost a Panzer II, I believe it was, to a very, very, very good shot by the T-34. Yes, a Panzer II. That, damn, that was a pretty damn good shot. How far is that? A little curious now. Uh, so we died there, so around about here, so... 400 odd meter meters? That's pretty damn good for a T-34. You know, there's, um, there's a lot of history texts surrounding the whole... Oh, we took... No, it's just because you're out of ammo. Okay, okay. There's a lot of history text about how, um, how bad the Russian tanks were, you know? And even, there's even a fair bit of uh, stuff describing how bad the crew were. And yes, early war, the Russian tanks crew were woefully undertrained and underprepared for what was actually going to uh, come at them. They did not have anywhere near enough of an understanding of actual tank tactics to be a real challenge to the Germans. But the supposed inferiority of Russian tanks is not really true. Not in the uh, strictest sense of the word. Ooh, enemy contact. Okay. Is that... that just... Are they? Oh yes they are. They're having a go at a bit of a counter-attack, aren't they? Oh yes they are. Oh yes they are. Well, I'm not gonna attack towards that, because I know it's friends is up in that general direction, so instead we're just going to... Uh, set it as a target. And we're gonna wait. T-34s were very fast tanks too, surprisingly so, considering they're not fantastic engines. Oh, you boys are out in the open. I don't know why. That seems like a terrible idea all in all, but... Oh well, you are the masters of your own destiny, I suppose. The masters of your own bloody burial ground, more like. But details. Okay. Now we are going to have to close with it. We're going to order one of the tanks to uh, move down on its flank, see if it can get a flank shot on it. The Long 50 was not a terrible anti-tank weapon, it just it wasn't designed to deal with something like the T-34, which just has a ton of sloped armor. Like, it was designed to deal with stuff like other Panzer 3s, you know, relatively thin armor, most of it being flat. The T-34-76 was a real nasty surprise to the Germans. What the bloody hell are you doing? No, 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 no! What the hell are you doing? That's a tank, you donkey! Don't charge that in a half-track! Evans! Well, how about you? You kind of stopped the whole flanking maneuver. I'd like it if you'd continue in that. Thank you very much. Ugh, yeah, now it's shooting at the half-tracks because the half-tracks were stupid enough to actually get close to the damn thing. Looks like we managed to get some kind of a hit on it, though, because it's fuel. Yeah, it's burning. That's that's it gone. Flank penetration. Okay. Well, hold the unit. Well, if my half tracks have not gotten gotten destroyed by whatever was in there, I'm pretty sure there's probably nothing in there. Because otherwise, the half tracks really, really ought to be dead at this point in time. What am I anti-tank gun shooting at? I assume that was the command tank, as you saw the flare, I assume that was the command tank of these two tanks. So it lost contact and then it tried a bit of an assault. In all due probability. 
Well, so far that's three T-34s for the loss of a single Panzer II. Can't really complain about that. But I've been trying to talk about goddamn tanks, but the game will not bloody let me. <sighs> okay, well... We're gonna pull you guys back again, because we don't really want you to be in a long-range duel with T-34s. Anyways... <sighs> oh, the crew's popped out. Well, I'm not too bothered about that, bye-bye. Yeah, <clears throat> the T-3476 and the KB-1 even more so was a really, really nasty surprise for the Germans because, well, due to the amount of propaganda about the Russians that had been spewed at them for absolutely years, like, the Nazis considered the, uh, the Bolsheviks to be the devil himself and essentially subhuman, so, you know, there's no way these subhuman monkeys could actually produce tanks that were better than, you know, German engineering and all that. But the T-34 and KV-1 was superior to the Panzer III in pretty much every single way. Uh, you can probably make the argument that the Panzer IV 75, the long 75, was superior to the T-34 76, and yep, yeah, I'd probably agree about that. Ceasefire, yeah, I think I might actually be accepting that, but first I need to ramble that rambled down my English. <clears throat> First, I need to finish rambling about tanks. The real drawback of the T-3476 and the KV-1 was not their armor, it wasn't their gun, it wasn't even really the crew's training or, you know, motivation, their morale. What really screwed the Russian tanks was the absolutely abhorrently bad optics. The Russian tanks had unbelievably terrible optics, and they were designed in the most ham-fistedly retarded way possible. The uh, larger late-war tanks, like the Josef Stalin, for example, the uh, so-called IS, because of course here in the West we decided to not do that properly, as uh, I believe in Russian, Yosef, Yosef is not still spelled with a J, but an I, so it would be Yosef, Yosef Stalin. But <clears throat> I'm not even entirely sure about that, so I should probably shut my mouth. Anyways, the uh, heavier tanks had a massive gun, 122mm cannon, fantastic cannon, could knock out pretty much any German tank at practically any range. But here's the problem, okay? First of all, the optics were woefully unreliable, so you were never entirely sure if you were actually going to hit your target, even if you got the range right. You couldn't be sure of actually hitting. And in a tank duel, getting the first effective shot is vital, because more often than not, the second shot will put you down. But the real problem was the fact that the Josef Stalin had these massive shells, which was its greatest advantage also, and the heavy armor, of course, but the size of the shell meant that it had to be reloaded in two separate parts. So you had the grenade itself, and then you had the primer, the charge, the black powder, you know. It wasn't black powder, but, you know, just to uh, explain. And that in itself isn't that big of a problem. Okay, it adds to the reload time, definitely, like it took an age to reload that bloody gun, but that's not the problem. The problem is, to do this, they had to lower the barrel into neutral position. This means that every time you fired the gun, you had to aim the gun away from the target, resetting your optic system, and then reload it, and then you had to reacquire the target again. So. Aiming at the target was pure bloody guesswork, and you couldn't even just improve upon a shot. You literally had to remember, okay, how many degrees did I aim at last time? So that was a huge problem. Another huge problem was the Soviet tank doctrine. Soviet tank crews were forbidden, just completely forbidden. There are even rumors about tank commanders getting shot for not obeying this particular instruction. They were to travel with their tanks oh, hull down, well not hull down, sorry, uh, buttoned up, I mean. <laughs> oh, that's a comical sight. Anyways, 
They had to travel with the tanks buttoned up. What this means is that the tank crew had to travel inside the tank. So, uh, we actually don't have a... Because now everyone is in, you know, looking position, so they're actually uh, poking their heads out. But uh, basically, it means that the tank would be completely shut. Everyone would be inside the tank. The commander would not be sitting out in the cupola like uh, you can see this guy here doing. They wouldn't have uh, any of the windows up, they wouldn't have the um, driver's hatch up, because you see this hatch up uh, here. That was open for the driver to stick his head out and actually see where he was going. So on the Soviet tanks, as soon as they were expected to enter battle, they buttoned up, which cut visibility to next to nothing. Like. You can just look at the size of this slit right here, yeah? You can't see much from this. If you've ever played a tank simulator game, or hell, even if you've just been inside an old tank, there is very, 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 very little you can actually see out from the inside of a tank. Which meant that once they entered battle, the Soviet tank crews were practically blind. The uh, German tank crews had no such restrictions. Of course, the reason why you buttoned up was the obvious fact that, you know, if the infantry commander or the crew is just having their heads popping up off the top of the tank, then of course, you might get shot, you know? Machine gun rounds are flying everywhere, snipers potentially, uh, shrapnel from grenades, all these things could potentially kill the commander, kill the crew. Which is, of course, a very, very bad thing. But German tank crews, and most often the commander, would use the front of their tank's uh, cupola. So, for example, here case, you'd have these uh, little slabs here. On some models, these slabs were in front, so you could use them as a bit of a shield against incoming fire, allowing the commander to view, to view the outside world. Additionally, the commander cupola on the German tank, you see this um, bulge here, bulge on the top here. This gave the commander a practically 360 degrees view by these little windows you can see. The uh, Russian tanks did not have these either. Let's see if we can... Uh, this one was relatively intact, wasn't it? Yeah. So you see here, you have the shield for the commander to hide behind, but, you know, they didn't use them. But you don't have the cupola view, so in essentially, the commander inside this tank was practically blind. He had these periscope, he had this periscope here, which didn't give him much of a view, and he had these windows on the side, but in essence, he didn't see much. Oh, enemy contact, really? Oh, holy dangarangus shittus maximus. <laughs> Okey bloody dokey, it appears that the enemy has decided that they do not want that ceasefire thing anyway. And they are coming for my arse. I guess they got pissed about me calling their optics shit and they decided to come and prove me wrong. Okay, uh, are they actually going to launch an attack across here because... I'm actually fine with that. They're going to launch their attacks straight into the teeth of the vast majority of my anti-tank guns. I need to move these further back, though. That has to happen. I need to move these, like, all the way back here, so I can use them as a counter-attack force rather than the main force, because most of these have, of course, the short-barreled uh, 50, which is not particularly effective. But yeah, I'm fine with that. If I can... Oh, yeah, that's... It's a little bit risky, because those are T-34s, and T-34s are very, very good tanks. Especially this tank is going to have a problem, because it doesn't have its tracks up, so it can't back away. Let's tell it to halt firing, so maybe they won't spot it. But yeah, uh, to quickly summarize, my point is that in a tank fight, Actually seeing the enemy is very, very, very important, and so depriving yourself of... This is actually wonderful, because here you can see, now the tank is moving and spotting. You've got the commander, he's got his shield up, you've got the driver's hatch open so the driver can see where he's going. And now you've got a fairly good view of the battlefield, but as soon as those hatches are closed, you've only got those tiny, tiny, tiny slits out of which you can actually see. 
which makes the tank a hell of a lot less effective, simply because the crew don't know what the hell they're actually shooting at, because they can't see what they're shooting at. But yeah, that is probably the primary reason, well, it's not the... There are two reasons. There are two reasons why German tanks performed a hell of a lot better than Russian tanks during the vast majority of the war. Vast majority. The first half of the Russian war, definitely. Uh, our second half is arguable. You could make arguments either way there. But yeah, the reason is, of course, that, first of all, the German crews had a hell of a lot more training. And, uh, yeah, just a lot more training. Really, they were far more experienced since they'd been fighting in Poland and France, of course. They had a better grip of uh, tank tactics, etc. Holy shit, really? Wow! First of all, how the fuck did you see that? Second of all, Jesus Christ, that was... That was one... Wow, how... How, lof, how far was that? Holy shit, that's a kilometre and a half! No bloody way you make that shot! <laughs> Jesus! Okay! <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that was impressive. Oh, I'll give him that much. Jesus Christ! How are you going? You got your track on yet? Yeah? No, you haven't. But you've kind of decided that you would rather not get killed, so you've just buttoned up. Probably not a terrible idea. Uh, who the hell just fired? You're firing. Why? There's no bloody way in hell you penetrate that. Why are you firing? Okay, they're firing way too early. I should have set them to hold fire. They're not penetrating T-34s at 800 meters. Oh, they are shooting at their flank armor. Is it worth it to continue? Is it worth it continuing to fire? That's a bad angle too, though. I'm not entirely convinced this is worth it. Well, if they're worried about those, hopefully they won't see the rest of them. Oh, Jesus Christ, the suicidal half-track. You move over there now, fast move, go. Yeah, we would rather get within about 500 meters before we start really firing. Oh, and they can't... Oh, they don't even have a line of fire, because apparently this is a mountain. That's a problem. Okay. We'll turn on them uh, being able to fire. And we'll literally just give them an attack order to see if we can move into some kind of range. And we've lost another tank who decided to stay back there for reasons unbeknownst to me. And we've got another tank that has his ass armor pointed towards the enemy. That is also a very, very bad idea. So we'll have to move forward here. I, uh... They just decided to not actually pull back. Ah, and of course, it's one of the long barrels. Damn it. Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. Damn it. They're coming over here. I should have saved the airplanes for now, but... You you can't really save airplanes, because it takes like half an hour to call them in, uh, once they've been called in once. Let's have you back up. No, 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 no. Okay, they're reversing, is not actually doing what it's supposed to right now. Come on. Ah, God damn it. Ah. So now you should be reversing, yes? No, you're not. Damn it. Okay, well, it's better for you to just fight then rather than showing your ass armor. Okay. This anti tank gun has moved into a good position. They should be able to get flank shots. He would.
would think. That tank is probably not going to live through this, honestly. We'll have to attack out and see if we can get those enemy tanks. Do you have line of sight on that? You do not. Of course you don't. That would be silly. That would be very silly. Well, if we get close enough, we might be able to bloody penetrate them somehow. Maybe. Perhaps. Kinda. Possibly. You should be in a fantastic position, though. I'm wondering why you're not firing. You can see that, surely. I mean, there's a couple of branches in your way, yes, but... Surely you can see that. Please tell me you can see that. Uh, apparently not. Okay, I'm gonna just have to order you to march, then. I mean, hell, this gun can see something, so you think that would be able to see it, but, uh... Commander is killed, Commander is killed. Lovely. Lots of Commander deaths. That's that's what we wanted. No, it's not. That's another tank gone. Okay, now, surely you must be able to see the enemy, yes? Come on. Come on. Come on. Shoot that thing. Come on. There you go. Well, that wasn't you, but, you know. Thanks for trying, I suppose. Now, set target to that. There you go, there you go, good boy. Much better, much better. Is it backing up? Yes it is, it's realized this is not the healthiest of places to be. Well, we're not gonna let it, obviously. You're gonna follow the bastard, because that's what you do to bastards. You follow them. And then you teach them a lesson in humility. That is what you do. How about this one? Oh yeah. It's it doesn't know which way to face. It's got anti-tank gun to its front, it's got uh, tanks to its sides. Uh I think it's panicking. Yeah it is. It's probably gonna try and back on up out there. We're gonna fast move on to its flank. At this range, even the 50 mil, even the short 50 mils would probably suffice. Not sure what you're doing. You're in a very bad position. We've lost another tank. Okay, not ideal. Not entirely sure what you're doing. I guess it's just panicking because it's got lots of crew. Like, just get out of there. Like, honestly, at this point, I just want to get closer so I can see if I can get some decent hits on this. This isn't in view range, isn't it? No, it isn't. Another commander is killed. Jesus. No? This unit is full health. Oh, hiss. Oh, of course. <laughs> and he killed the commander. None, uh, none of the other crew, just the commander. Very pinpoint accurate, the 76 was. There we go. That's it. Knocked out. Now, you back fuck off now, please, yes. Oh, uh, god, we've got another tank heavily damaged, immobilized. And uh, that's immobilized too, so at least it's not going to be escaping, but... The question is not so much if it's, it's going to be able to escape, as is... Am I going to be able to kill the bastard thing? I wish this was later war so I'd have Panzerfaust, because I could probably just have rushed the engineers up there and knocked it out. Well, you're a Panzer too, you're not actually going to be doing dick to that, so let's just fast move you away from that, I think. I really do not want to be pushing these tanks over the open ground here. 
might not have a choice. I need to knock out that T-34. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. I am going to have to. I know, I know. Rushing a T-34 seems like a terrible idea, but trust me. Ow. With your weapons, it's the only actual chance you bloody have, so you'd probably best do it. No, that tank's knocked out. Ugh. Well, honestly, these tanks are chaff anyway, so I'm not really too bothered if I lose the entire platoon of them, because... They are chaff. Short-barreled 50s? Ugh. Worthless. Literally worthless, as I'm pretty sure you've been able to see through the course of this particular battle. If these anti-tank guns had decided to move up, we could have actually killed it relatively easily, but... They're afraid of the tank. Okay, it looks like, yeah, we finally got it. It's on fire and it's gone. Now, we will be pulling you the hell back. And we will be accepting that ceasefire. Okay, well, that is four, five, six, seven T-34s in trade for uh, four... Four Panzer threes, one immobilized, and one Panzer two. Yeah, I'd consider that a pretty good trade, everything considered. In historical settings, it's not a very good trade, but, well, in historical settings of 1942, case blue, it's actually not that bad. Okay, so we killed about a hundred of them, which isn't terrible. We had a lot of wounded. Okay, so yeah, we knocked out all seven of their tanks. Well, I, we actually don't know if there's more tanks. There might be, but we've knocked out seven tanks and we lost four. So yeah, I would consider that uh, a job reasonably well executed, so I have been Arch, thank you very much for watching, and uh, I hope to see you next time where hopefully we'll have something a little bit bigger than a 50mm gun to deal with T-34s with. Have a good day.